What's going on ladies and gentlemen, once again I'm Nev from Nev's Tech, but today I want to do Chromecast versus Android Box versus Amazon Fire Stick TV, whatever, versus the uh, Apple TV. Now, first and foremost, I gotta say that this stuff is so cheap that any any tech person that had money to throw around should probably have one of each of them. I think the most expensive one is the uh, Apple TV. Now, this Apple TV cost, I think it was 100 bucks. This is uh, fifth generation, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. And this uh, Android box, it might have cost 200 because this was top of the line when I got it. Now, I'm going to give you the ins and outs of each one of these. I'm going to tell you their advantages and disadvantages. But one of the core things, one of the core principles you might want to use when getting into this is figuring out, do I prefer Apple or Android? Do I have all of my money in Apple stuff or in Android uh, stuff, Android market, Apple marketplace stuff? Because if you have music on one and not the other, it's going to be hard uh, to use these things to their full advantage. Also, at the same time, you should ask yourself, what kind of assistant do you use if you use uh, a verbal assistant like Amazon Alexa or uh, Google Assistant? And the third thing you got to figure out is how much patience do you have and how much of a techie are you? But one thing everybody definitely needs to know up front about each, each of these units is uh, the Google Chrome. Chromecast is generally useless unless you have uh, a cell phone to control it with or a laptop to control it with. It is a gateway, basically, uh, for other things to show things on your television screen. The Android box generally is the most complicated, and it might fill you with something I, I tend to call Android rage. Androids can do more than any Apple can, but Apple does things right, and any Android... Thing that I've gotten has always made me want to throw it through a wall but at the same time I can't live without the both of them I, I, I love the Android box but you got to be really techy you got to be able to be ahead of the curve you have to know that technically you know what what you're doing is not 100% legal uh, but if you're the type that doesn't really care about that kind of thing and you are really staying on top of things technically and you don't mind it when the streams don't work all the time because uh, if you're viewing pirated stuff on here let's face it you know it's not it's not technically legal and uh, uh, most of the time nobody actually gets themselves in hot water for it I, I have yet to hear about a time when someone's gotten into hot water but the best things keep changing the best programs to get you uh to get you things keep changing it's a game of cat and mouse the feds keep taking people down that use them uh illegitimately let's say but at the same time new things come up and with android android's going a hundred ways all the time and while one program stops working another one will get going uh th there will always be another way so, for example, when I first got an Android box, I'm pretty sure Genesis was the big distribution group, was the big thing to get things through. And uh, Android uh, 7.0 or something like that was big. Now, Genesis turned into Exodus. Exodus yeah, doesn't really work so much anymore. And uh, it works, it just doesn't work as good as it used to. So within the course of a year, we switched to three different distribution groups. And the, the, the pain with that is, let's say you want to give this to, to uh, your grandmother who has no idea anything about technology. Man, there's some really talented with tech grannies out there. I'm talking grannies that have no idea what they're doing. You're gonna to have to keep coming back. You're gonna to have to show her the new method, the new way of, uh, of getting entertainment through an Android box. It's, a, it's an unfortunate part, but uh, uh, very definitely, you know, that's, that's just how it goes. And we need to update it. I gotta say, I don't know too many salesmen, Android salesmen that aren't really creepy like really really creepy i'm sure there's some out there i i know of one i know of one but usually it's the kind of thing you find them on facebook and if you go to uh check out uh their personal page they got themselves with guns or just in, in a, inappropriate thing i'm not saying there's anything wrong with guns but business and pleasure you, you keep them separate also at the same time it's the kind of thing you have one of these android boxes no, and they don't work really it. snappy and, and you got a kid who's just no, impatient and needs her paw patrol immediately then uh, you're probably not going to get your your paw patrol because uh a lot of the times there's lag and a lot of time what are you doing with this stuff this oh no. anyways moving on next we have the amazon fire stick uh, i was really impressed with the price of it on uh, one of their black friday sales pretty sure it was only about 40 bucks the, uh, the Amazon Fire Stick only costs $5 more than the cheapest of all the units here, and that's the Chromecast. And it comes with a remote that is easily lost, 
and that's why I put stickers on it so that I'd be able to find it, especially when my daughter puts it on a, a black sheet or something like that. Anyways, definitely great value, especially if you get Amazon Prime. A lot of these mainly will do the work of a smart TV and then some basically, but this thing, if you have Amazon Prime, then you get the Amazon Prime channel. Man, the Amazon channel prime. Don't even get me into it because they have some good stuff. And then they have some stuff that is just so bad that it's good. And I'm, I'm talking Boys of Valor. I'm talking, I'm talking really old, really bad monster movies. And a lot of good stuff, again, like Kindergarten Cop. Kinder, kindergarten Cop, awesome. Just awesome. It's, it's amazing. If I would have had in my library all the stuff Netflix and Amazon Prime had when I was a child, my VHS collection, if it was that collection, people would hail me as a god. And these days, uh, I would be a hero at least. Anyways, these days, we have all these videos and nobody actually wants to watch them. So it's comparatively interesting, I gotta say. And then, of course, last but definitely not least is the, uh, the Apple TV. The Apple TV also comes with a remote. You get versions that have a hard drive and versions that do not have a hard drive, unfortunately. And the ones that don't have a hard drive are cheaper. I'm pretty sure this is the fifth generation, relatively big but uh, relatively well built you can view and save if you have a hard drive you can view videos that, and listen to music that you have purchased through the uh, the the, uh, the the app store the itunes through itunes and that can be very advantageous to you you have your remote here you can actually rent videos too so if you're an apple person it's definitely the kind of thing that you want the kind of thing you're interested in it works nicely. It works like it's supposed to. You're not going to be pirating it. I'm pretty sure it's almost impossible to with to, to jailbreak them, to home homebrew them, to get illegal channels. And even if you did, you'd have to have someone that knew how to keep keep you updated. If you yourself did not know how to do that, but still a solid piece of equipment. Generally, one of the most expensive. These two are generally the most expensive. And uh, actually, the price is more or less the same depending on what you want. Like this is a really good uh, Android box. This is a very good one, Octo Octo Core, whatever you can uh, you, you can look that up. And yeah, very very nice one, very nice one. All right, so now I'm gonna go through them individually and give you the nitty gritty on all of them. But that was the basics of it. So as soon as you plug in your Fire Stick, that's what it's gonna look like. And I have the app right here. Come on, autofocus. For Fire TV, just like that. Really easy to set up. You just click. There you are. That's home, back, next, next, pause. As you know, as you know. So, so yeah, if you want to go to YouTube on the Fire Stick, you got to use the Silk Browser. If the YouTube app won't work. And with the Silk Browser, it's just like browsing the website. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. I'd, it's not really seamless. I don't notice any issues with it. Now, Prime Video, of course, you have to subscribe uh, to Amazon Prime to get this. Man, it has some good stuff. But Oh, shoot. Sorry. Yeah, it has some good stuff. But, man, it has uh, some really bad stuff, too. And some of the stuff is so bad, it's good. Like, when I say good stuff, like, the tick is awesome. They got, they got enough crazy stuff here to keep all the kids happy. Uh, married with children, very good stuff. And okay, you gotta check this out, Gigantor. Gigantor is like a 1960s Japanese animated uh, good time show. Okay, now remember when I said it was so bad that it was good? This is pretty much what I'm talking about. Really, really cheap Asian anime from way back in the day. It's all about a big bot named Gigantor, but I'll be darned if I even see the guy show up. The little kid's got this box, he presses a little button, and Gigantor shows up. But jeez, oh, there, he just he just summoned him. I've seen that. Maybe we, maybe we can see him. Nope, nope, not today. There's our boy, Giganto. <laughs> of course, when I'm trying to review it, it stops working. Alright, so yeah, we got things like House, Third Rock from the Sun, Highlander, all kinds of good stuff. If you got kids that just want to sit on the couch and consume any kind of media, this is fine. This is definitely good. You definitely want one of these if you have Prime and you are a cable cutter. All kinds of good stuff. All kinds of old good stuff. Not so much new good stuff, definitely old good stuff. 
Kindergarten Cop Man. I hadn't seen that one in so long. I actually watched it the other day and I was blown away by it. Uh, uh, animation things like Fire and Ice that, uh, geez, I didn't even know that kind of animation existed. That's just, uh, that's just some crazy stuff. I gotta say, if you guys like monster movies, there's definitely a lot of horrible ones on this one. This one's called Attack of the Monsters. I swear, I've never seen anything quite like it. Monsters lived inside of the earth until they got smart enough to be like humans. And then they started attacking. That one speaks English. <laughs> These are English-speaking uh, uh, dinosaurs. This, this is just beautiful. I'd never heard of this. And so this animation in with it, cut in with it too. And between the, the, the Japanese animation and these... That, oh, that guy's so freaky. There, there it is. It's just... Oh, man. It's like they were trying to make five cartoon episodes of this. Maybe they did, and it showed somewhere else. And here they just threw it all in for one movie. But it's a very cheap Power Rangers-esque. I'm telling you, these are so bad that they're good. I could, uh, I could just sit down here all day and watch these horrible things that I never knew existed. Of course, you got other apps and games that you can install, but uh, honestly, you'll probably never, ever watch or listen to TED Talks. Low curve. These are the kinds of things. I love downloading all kinds of them and then never actually using them. Crossy Road. Interesting little game. Of course, they got their own free Pac-Man game. Oh yeah. That's the fun stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Come on. Boy, I tell you what. Man, I'll tell you, this is definitely a lot better if you have the remote control. Of course, next up, let's have a look at the Netflix. You gotta say, Netflix uh, travels really quick. It looks really good on this. I got my router just upstairs. It's an AC router. Of course, this uh, unit takes uh, AC Wi-Fi. Very good, very quick. But of course, AC only works if you're more or less in line of sight. Even if you are out of uh, your line of sight and behind maybe even a window, then uh, AC doesn't work nearly as good as it could. So here you see, Netflix shows up. Looks real good. Works real good. What can I say? This is Netflix. I don't need to do a review on Netflix. You all know what that's like. Alright, so as I said, the YouTube app does not work. Go to the Silk browser. Go to YouTube. And from there, you'll have YouTube. So yeah, this is what YouTube looks like. Kind of generic. Could look a lot nicer. But, hey, it works. And if you're searching for something, you can find it. And that's the Amazon Fire TV. Let me show you uh, how to use the Google Chromecast. One thing I should definitely mention is that they both have beautiful screen savers when you're not doing anything. Alright, now getting back to the fact that you should just go with whatever uh, home voice assistant unit you have. Uh, I have the the Google Home Assistants and the Chromecast. They get along very well. So because of that, I can do stuff like this. Hey Google, play Eli the Computer Guy videos from YouTube. Alright, playing Eli the Computer Guy from YouTube on MovieGen Chromecast. And there we go. Now, now when I first got, uh, when I first got these assistants, I could actually play a YouTube video through the Chromecast, but I can't seem to do that anymore. Oh, this is actually Eli's latest video. I gotta play this yet. I gotta play this yet. Now, this is what happens when you ask Google to show you the weather verbally. Now, if I had Amazon Alexa, I could do these same kind of things when I was using the Amazon Fire. Uh, unfortunately, I, I like uh, the Google Assistant more than I like Alexa, or at least more than I'd like to switch over to anything else. Now, of course, what you need to do is you got to get on your phone, find the, the YouTube video you want to watch, and then hit the then hit the cast button, the red button up high. And now it's supposed to be playing. Oh no, it changed what I was watching. Okay, let's watch. Let's get something else. Okay, I'll press play there, and it comes up on the screen just like that. So it's the same kind of idea like with Netflix. You go onto your phone, you find what Netflix video you want, you cast it, and uh, it kind of takes a little bit of batteries away from your phone, which I'm not a big fan of. Okay, yeah, so let's play some dino trucks. And then I'll skip the intro. Hopefully I don't get demonetized because of this. 
And where is it? Where, yeah, the, the cast right there. Hit the cast. Tell it which crone cast you want to hit. And away you go. Away you go. So yeah, ultimately the crone cast is like half of a tool. It's a very awesome half of a tool, but it's still just half of a tool. You still have to have a laptop or something to tell up to play X, Y, or Z. You know what? I'm curious. What happens? I'm pretty sure if I turn this phone off, it'll stop sending. So if you need to leave for pizza and you're casting, it'll stop. We'll see. Nope. Looks like I was wrong. I've had this thing... Uh, had this phone off for about five minutes now and she's still playing nicely. By the way, you can actually cast to the fire stick too. Come on. Alright, so you're supposed to be able to cast to it, but it's just not working for me. Honestly, I never cast, so uh, I can't tell you if this had worked in the past either. Hopefully it's just some temporary difficulty I'm having. So what we have here is the third generation Apple TV. It's pretty solid. It's got a bit of weight to it. Takes HDMI, takes uh, digital audio, and you got uh, room there for your network port. And trust me, with this stuff, you want to use a network port. Wi-Fi isn't as good as uh, as hardwire for anything yet. Uh, the next Wi-Fi title is uh, AC, and AC will be much better than N that we have now, and then Wi-Fi might be perfect, but right now, if you want a good media center, you want to, to plug one of these in, you want your network cable, your hardwire, and then you got your standard non-ground power right there. Really nice little thing, this third generation goes for uh, 89 bucks Canadian. And uh, as a nice little remote, having a remote is really nice with the uh, media centers for obvious reasons. Uh, you can also use an app on your iPhone or your iPad or the uh, iTouch and you can control it through there. Now it should be known that the third generation Apple TV doesn't have any onboard storage. Meaning if you want to play with anything, you're going to have to uh, stream it online. And that's not a big thing for most people, but other people really didn't like this fact. So what Apple went ahead and did was made the fourth generation. So the fourth generation, uh, 32 gigabyte model is $200, and the 64 gigabyte model is uh, $269. Of course, once again, that's Canadian. And with that, you can just automatically download anything you want. If you know how to jailbreak your Apple TV, you can also put Kodi on it. And if you put Kodi on it, then you don't need a, an Android box. Because that's the only point of having an Android box. Kodi! So with Apple TV, you can legitimately purchase uh, movies. Uh, you can watch the movies that you've already per purchased over the Apple Store network. The Big Lebowski, I got this one from a digital download, and it keeps it here and it saves it. I can load it up any place that uh, any place that I go. You get digital downloads when you buy the DVD or Blu-ray sometime. Okay, and you also got you, got you got a lot of nice things. You got Netflix, you got uh, you got Crackle, you got YouTube TED Talks. Good stuff. This is definitely good for enhancing your system. But again, it won't replace cable. It should also be noted that you can cast things from your iPad, for example, to your Apple TV. I'm only holding this thing upside down so you don't see the horrible crack I got. Oh no! Anyways, here we go. You can play it from here, and it'll play off there. Now, this is just a monitor with HDMI, or otherwise you would be able to hear the audio going on in the background. And, uh, yeah, most things you can pull up on an iPad, you can cast to a television, so that would be good for, uh, for many reasons. There's lots of things you can cast with this, but um, it is somewhat limited, but still, casting is awesome. This is a Google Chromecast, second generation. 
Comes with a HDMI port, very, very interesting, very small device. And it plugs in, it gets this power from a USB mini. You can plug it into your TV, you can plug it into here for power. And then once you have that running, you have to connect this. There is no remote. You have to connect this puppy to uh, to your Wi-Fi with your cell phone. If you do not have a have a cell phone, if you do not have an Android cell phone, this might be pretty much worthless. Uh, there is probably there's probably ways of doing this with Apple, but I'm more familiar with using my Apple. But anyways, if you don't have one of those two smartphones, I wouldn't even bother picking this thing up. Uh, there's no remote. This is what you get when you buy the package, but its price is very affordable. Uh, I believe I picked this up for $60. Now for this, we are going to need to go to the online store and download the Google Chromecast app to get this set up. Now Chromecast is mainly just used to cast things from a tablet, from a phone. There's not much it can do on its own, but uh, it's definitely worth the money. It's definitely an interesting tool. So here I have a, uh, a video on YouTube, just to give an example of some of the things you can do. You come up here, you press this button to cast. And then I'm casting that video from my... Uh, from my tablet, from my smartphone. Now unfortunately, this system doesn't have a hard wire built into it, uh, a network cable. You're only going to be on Wi-Fi, so your Wi-Fi has to be pretty good if you're going to watch full 1080p things. Uh, Netflix is good to watch 1080p things on here. Uh, I can't really think of a whole lot of other things, but this is going to drain, somewhat drain the battery on your phone. You need a phone to use it. And, uh, yeah, really cool for the money, but uh, not a whole lot of things you can do with it right now. Next up, we have the Android box. And I, look, I know you're looking at this thinking, that is not an Android box. That's, uh, that's a tablet with, with a bunch of stickers on it. And, yes, you would be absolutely right. This is a tablet with a bunch of stickers on it. But it has the Android operating system, and that is a precursor to the Android box. The Android box is using the same operating system as Android cell phones do. Uh, they use various versions of the operating system. The thing about the Android operating system is it's absolutely free to use. It's open source. So you get producers all over the place throwing Android into all kinds of crazy things because they can do it license free. Uh, the source is open. They can go and do pretty much what they want. Uh, so I'm just using this tablet to represent an Android box. Android boxes can typically be bought for $50, but getting free TV on these things uh, is not particularly easy. If you go out and you buy an Android box, you want to make sure that you buy one that has support, that has a number that you can call. Because uh, if you don't set these things up right, or if something changes, if uh, one of your distribution people get kicked offline, then you have to go in and set things up again. So this might not be the best thing to give to your grandpa you see once every three years because he's going to be calling you up and asking you to get things going for you again. Um, these are usually not the greatest quality, but I've had a lot of people use cheap ones and not have too many complaints. So what we have here is uh, the Kodi box, ultimately what I'm using is a Kodi box. The only difference between this tablet and the Kodi box is this tablet has a touch screen on it. Um, so we'll just go to the Kodi app, which hopefully is about the only thing you get shipped with your uh, Android box, should you decide to get one. And anyways, this is a good way to connect to streams of, of video from all over the place. So we're in videos add-ons. Now this isn't the easiest thing to do for everyone. Not everybody can do it. You kind of be a little, have to be a little techno savvy to understand this. Now this is a repro called Exodus and I love it. It's got all the stuff. This is all very new stuff. Now it's not all the best quality. It's not always it's not always the most uh, it's not always the most stable, but it's great for the price. Usually a Kodi box is about 50 to 100 bucks.
And yeah. So this isn't the kind of thing that you want to be given to a 50 year old, for example. Uh, someone who doesn't know anything about computers, you wouldn't give this to your grandpa that you talk to twice a year. Because odds are, one of the repositories is going to go down and then you're going to have to get online and uh, drive your butt over there and set things up for him again. But for the price, you know, it's it's awesome. If you got any questions or comments or think I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment.